Hi and welcome to another video from AI Sciences. This video is an extension of the previous video in which we tried to move one object. In this video, we will see that how we can handle and move multiple objects using MediaPipe and OpenCV. I'm your instructor Muhammad Ahmed and in this video, we will try to extend the logic implemented in the previous video for any number of objects. If you are new to our channel, then just a brief introduction of AI Sciences that at the platform of AI Sciences, we are providing number of facilities and functionalities regarding software development, product development, creating courses for AI, data science, computer vision and whatnot. If you are interested in any of this, then do visit the links present in the description. So let's just begin with the video. <laughs> So here you can see that we are in the existing code that we actually uh, that we actually written in the previous video in which we are just get uh, getting all this information and then we are extracting the land handmarks from this particular image and then after extracting the land handmarks we are detecting that whether the index finger point is available in this circle or is inside the circle or not and whether both uh, the first and the second fingers are open and not and then based on that we are moving our object this is exactly the same code that we have actually written in the previous video so if you if you just landed on this video then i would highly recommend you to go back in the previous video in which we are just seeing that how we can drag and drop one object get comfortable with that develop the understanding of this code and in the next video in the in this particular session we will try to comprehend that existing video with the new changes so for that, the first thing that we have to do is to just give it a go for this particular script so that we have the uh, confidence that we are going in the right direction and we are working on the correct script. So if I may just run it and here's my hand and as soon as I drag my fingers inside it, I am able to move it. Now if I go for only one finger, I can, yeah, that's working perfectly fine. Next thing, now we have to develop a logic in which we can, instead of just implementing or just printing this single circle with these center points, we will try to create a list of circles, list of uh, center points on which we will be drawing the, uh, the circles. So if we just go for center points and let's just create it a list. And inside this, we can just simply put a number of coordinates. You can put some random coordinates as well. I have already uh, did some work around on that. So I'm using those coordinates, but still it's tot it totally depends on your choice. You can put any coordinates at this point. And the last one is 800 and 200. Now what this center points will do, the center points is now basically a list of all these coordinates we want to draw first circle on this 180 and 100 next circle on 300 and 160 point and the last circle on 80 and 200 so one thing more that we have to add is basically the circle colors so we we in the previous video we actually have only one circle so for that we can just simply consider the particular color because whatever the color is is obviously the color regarding that circle in this video we are working on multiple objects multiple circles so we have to actually save the color in a list of each circle and based on that the whether the circle is movable or not whether the circle is locked we can we we have to basically update the color for that particular circle inside the list so we are going to just do that. So circle colors equals to by default the colors we want is the red. Now uh, if okay let's just take these two statements from here and put it over here. So we have red we have green and here we have divide we have drive the points on which we want to draw the circles and we have decided the colors for our circle which is by default red. Uh, so all the circles are red by default because they are locked. Now before moving further, let's just try to print these circles on the screen so that we get the confidence that we are going in the right direction. So instead of using this statement, what we will do, we will just simply iterate on it.
on the circle points. Okay, so let's just make it that from here from point and the color. We want to get the circle points and we want to get the circle colors. Now what this statement will do if you are not uh, familiar with this zip that this zip statement will actually combine both of these lists and for each iteration it will take for first iteration basically it will provide the zeroth index to both point and color and then the first index and the second index of both the list so it will go like for the first iteration it will take this element and this element and provide it to point and color then this element and then this element the second one and point it to list uh, point and color then instead of just uh, going for this statement over here let's just take it down and let's just put it over here now we are drawing or we are drawing a circle on the image now instead of putting it in the center point we will try to draw a circle on this point with this particular color So I hope that you uh, get the idea that what we are doing over here that we are just basically taking the points we are taking the colors for each of the circle that we have decided on the top the coordinates that we have decided on the top and then we are just printing or displaying that uh, displaying those colors. So if we just go for the console again give it a go hopefully we will be getting three circles. Okay, so I guess we, yeah. So here, instead of circle colors, we have to go for center points and this one. So we are referring to the center points and then we are referring to the circle colors. And over here, we are getting the point, we are getting the color and then we are printing or displaying those circles. So if we again give it a go, Perfect, we are getting three circles available on our screen. Now, if I may just put my hand over here, you can notice that we are getting the exception. The reason for that exception is, uh, let me just clear this. The reason for this exception is over here. So now we are accessing this center point, which if we go on the top and we look for it, this center point is now is not available anymore so we have these center points right and when we are when we are trying to access these center points with these coordinates over here it is raising the exception because center point is not declared and we have renamed the variable to center points and also we don't want to get the exact uh, the complete coordinate over here we are just referring to the x axis at this point and we are just referring to the y axis at that point so this this thing is not making any sense to the compiler and and it sure does not next thing is uh, after printing these circles the next logic that we have to modify is basically the circle points on which we will iterate based on the length of the length of the circles that uh, count of the circles that we have and then based on that we will devise the equation we will rewrite this equation basically and we will also try to play around with this logic over here as well so if I may go over here and I go for for I in range because I want to get it with the index so I will go for the length of center points you can go for the circle as well so doesn't really matter so this thing over here will now provide us with the zero first second and third because uh, zero one two because we have three circles so for first iteration we will get zero then one then two now we will be using this center points over here and instead of going for the center points uh, straight away we will take it as I and then let me just write this first and then I will explain it to you that what's happening over here and I now if we consider the center points that we created the first center point is this one the second center point is this one and the third center point is this one now we are just iterating on this for the for based on I like 0 1 and 2 
and then we are asking it for the first iteration we are considering the first center point then for the next iteration we are considering the second then for the next iteration we are considering the third center point based on that from that particular center point for that particular iteration we are just using the same equation that we want to get the x here and we want to get the y here same thing if we go further okay let's just complete this first and then we will run it so here the we we have satisfied the equation that for the first iteration we are getting this center i equals to let's say zero let me just try and dry run this for you so for the first iteration this i value will be zero and when we go for this center points of i it will provide us with this particular coordinate the coordinate the center point for our first circle it will provide us with this one and then after getting this coordinate we are extracting its zeroth which is this one so we are guess we are trying to get its x coordinate which is over here 120 the rest is actually explained in the previous video so i'm not going to uh, go that road again so now this thing for each iteration this thing will work on for each circle Next is we also have to change the center points at this level as well because we want to work on the particular iteration circle. So center points i and for that we have to set the center points uh, equals to hand points of 8. Next thing for the colors. Now for the colors we have to go for instead of just manipulating a single color variable because as I mentioned earlier that Previously, we were only working on a single circle. So we it was sufficient enough for us to consider only a single variable. Now we are working with multiple circles and that's why we created the circle colors list. So we will save that particular color inside this variable. So for this circle, we have red. For this circle, we have red. For this circle, we have red. Now over here, if the particular condition is met that if the distance is greater than or equals to zero, which means our index finger is inside the circle. Again, logic explained in the previous video. Then we are going inside it and we are checking that if if we are if the fingers are inside the circle, then we are checking that if both the fingers, index finger and the second finger is up, then we want to update the circle color. So we will go for circle colors. Again, we will consider the relevant eye and we will set that color to green. Same will happen for this one like here and if we just check it and paste it over here and for this we need to get the color red. So this was the basic idea over here we are just iterating on each index we are saying for 0, 1, 2 then for the 0th let's just consider this for the 0th when i is equals to 0. We are checking for the center point of zero, which means the first center point or the first circle. Then we are using this equation to detect the distance between our cent our first circle and our index finger. Then based on that, we are checking that if the index finger is inside the circle or not. And if the index finger is inside the circle, we are checking that if both the fingers are open or not. And if both the fingers are open, then we are changing the circle so if the, both the fingers are open and we are inside the circle so that means that we can successfully move that circle so for that we will just change the color from red to green and we are just displaying uh, changing the coordinates for that particular center that instead of the previous one now update your coordinates based on my index finger point otherwise if we are not inside we are just updating the color again to the red so if we just uh, move our fingers outside the circle it will just simply make it as red so this is the basic idea that how we can instead of working on the single object how we can create a list with their coordinates and how we can associate their properties like colors and then how we can proceed further with it so now if we give it a go with python main.py so if I may just go for this one I can successfully move it I go for one finger then two I can successfully move this object as well then for this one I can successfully move this object as well yeah 
so here you can actually notice one thing so as soon as i just bring my circles together it just simply combines them so let me just show you again so if i run it again and here if i may just take this circle and sync it with this one and sync it with this one so now what's happening that it it basically combined all of my circles and all of my circles are now associated with a single point now if i may just display the coordinates you will notice that all the circles are now at the same port at the same coordinates so if i may just go over here and at this point if we just print the center point So we are getting the circle coordinates which are at their various positions. Now if I may just take this. So you can see this center one is basically moving this one. Now if I just move it with this one and move it with this one. Now you can see that they all are basically synced together. Now they all are basically they all basically have the same coordinates. And if I try to move around it, it will again uh, provide me to it will only allow me to work with them together because they all have the same coordinates now and it cannot detect that whether we have multiple circles or not. So to overcome this, we just have to put one break statement. So if we go for the inside statement that if we are inside the circle and we just have to break it now what's happening over here that for this iteration for this for loop it is okay for this for loop it is basically iterating on all of the circles and checking for the that whether our finger is inside the circle or not and then it is allowing us to drag and drop now as soon as we encounter a single circle and we are engaged with it we just need to break it we don't need to engage any other circle so if the first circle is being engaged it will come over here it will move it and it will break it because otherwise if we don't put this statement over here then what's happening that if the first circle is engaged it will go for the second one and it will engage the second one as well if if they both are uh, together if they both are close enough so we just have to put the break statement over here so that if the first circle is engaged it will just break the loop if the second circle first first iteration first circle is not engaged then let's say then for the second circle the second circle the second iteration the second circle is engaged it will just simply engage it move it and break it same for the third one as well so now if we just move it again you will notice that it will allow us to move the circles through each other so if I may just put this circle over here and I move this circle. See, although it is, uh, it's basic, it, it, there is a possibility that it can uh, squeeze the circles together because of the proximity. But still, we, we are good with that, that none of the circles that it's not like that we can basically uh, merge them together and then we cannot separate it. We can merge them and then if we want we can just simply get a single circle out. So it's not like that they will simply be synced together. So this was the basic idea of how you can move multiple objects using uh, the OpenCV and Media Pipe library. So this is pretty much it from this video. And in the next video, we will try to build a simple game for the uh, for the children, for the student that they can actually play around that game for the color separation. And we will see in the next video that how we can get something more interesting using this concept. So this is pretty much it from this video. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. I hope that you develop the idea that how we are, we are doing all this stuff. Still, if you have any questions, then we are here for you. Please feel free to let us know in the comment section and we will try to get back to you on that as soon as possible. Also, please do subscribe to our channel and do hit the bell icon so that you get the notifications of our upcoming videos. This is pretty much it from my side. I will see you in the next video.